Hi, and welcome to another one of my cyber security videos. Before I start, let me quickly tell you about my free guide called How to Get Into Cyber Security for Beginners, where I showcase my five must know tips for anyone considering a career in cyber security. The link is in the description below. Okay, now let's get started. What is a Security Operations Center, SOC? A Security Operations Center, SOC for short, is part of the security team of an organization that is responsible for analyzing and protecting the organization from cyber attacks. Although SOC employees work with other teams and departments, they are usually their own independent department. The SOC responsibilities are at the operational aspects of an organization to ensure the continued operation of the organization's information security protections are not being compromised. This is different to the other security aspects of an organization where the responsibilities lie with developing security strategy, designing security architecture to implementing protective security measures. In essence, the SOC is responsible for ensuring the security implemented by other teams in the organization is steadfast and if this is not the case to make sure effective damage limitation takes place. A security operations center's staff consists mainly of security analysts, with specialist staff also including those with skills in forensic analysis, cryptography to malware reverse engineering. SOC positions tend to be held by employees who have access to the most sensitive information and data across the organization's systems. Typically, security operations centers provide round-the-clock 24-7 monitoring to protect the systems using specialist security tools and expert personnel known as SOC analysts. Most of the information the SOC relies on for security analysis is assessed using automated systems capable of fil filtering and flagging the most serious security events. This allows the SOC analyst to be able to quickly deal with security incidents with higher priority very quickly, instead of having to manually sift through security events and determine the priorities. Services provided by security operation centers. Security operation centers provide two types of services, monitoring and incident management. Both of these services are an important part of how the SOCs run in their day-to-day -day activities. The Security Operations Centre consists of highly qualified personnel who are actively involved in monitoring, detecting and improving the security posture of the organisation they work for. Through their prevention, detection and analysis work, they can respond to cyber security threats using well-established and tested processes. The SOC is headed by a SOC manager whose responsibility is to oversee the security operations and manage the SOC staff, including analysts, engineers and security specialists. Monitoring. Monitoring involves checking systems for cybersecurity threats and usually involves using specialised cybersecurity tools to pick up suspicious patterns. These cybersecurity tools link into a centralised management system with dashboards that provide any alerts to suspicious activities and patterns. Incident management. Incident management is dealing with alerts to suspicious activities and patterns involving trying to determine firstly the criticality of the threat and then running through various incident management processes to try to neuter the threat. The processes generally involve people to manage them and technology to help pinpoint more information about the threats and try to stop it in its wake. What should a security operations centre monitor? Security monitoring is involved in watching and analysing an organisation's systems and environments for security events. An organisation's network, servers, databases to its websites, endpoints like computers and more are in scope for security monitoring. Especially security tools like breach detection tools are used to protect systems, with some tools providing immediate responses, that is in real time, to breaches, such as intrusion prevention systems, IPS for short, and intrusion detection systems, IDS for short, with other tools providing delayed responses, like the SEAM tool, as these tools work by ingesting logs and then analysing these logs, with the delay in getting these logs being responsible for these tools not to be able to work in real time. Analysis. The SOC's primary goal is to ensure any potential security incidents are identified correctly, analysed accordingly through 
a thorough investigation with any steps to reduce any immediate impact if possible implemented. The reporting of incidents is vitally important as incorrect reporting could end up making a security incident worse. The analysis will try to determine how systems were breached by trying to find out the entry point of where hackers managed to get in. Once this has been established, the next stage of analysis will look at the depth of the breach by trying to work out what other systems were compromised, what was potentially stolen or altered or added if it's spyware, and to try to come up with a detailed map of hacked, hacker activities. The SOC analysts have a plethora of security tools at their disposal to aid their analysis work and give them detailed information quickly. Their goal is to identify and analyse cybersecurity incidents and respond to them with a variety of tools such as threat detection methods, intrusion detection and response, IDR for short, intrusion prevention and control, IPC for short, and the prevention of cybercrime. The analysis will also look to try to stay ahead of potential threats by analysing active feeds, establishing rules, identifying exceptions, improving responses and keeping a close eye on the defences already in place. SOCs are designed to improve threat detection so that they can respond faster and more effectively to reduce or even minimise their risk. Some SOC team responsibilities also include the management of security tools from Security Incident Event Management SEAM, tools to firewalls. The management responsibilities require updating these tools with the latest patches and fixes. A fix. Once the threat has been analysed, the next step involves in trying to contain the threat. It's like getting injured and starting to bleed, with the first steps involved in trying to stop the bleeding so the blood can clot and stop any nasties getting into the body. Likewise, with containment insecurity, the hole in the system where the threat has entered, its entry point, needs to be closed off and patched in some way to stop any more damage being done. If a hole has been created, such as a vulnerability in a website, has allowed hackers to run SQL injection attacks, then the first step is either to bring the website down or put some protection in front of the website. Bringing the website might not make commercial sense, especially if an organisation has thousands of customers relying on the website. So putting in protective measures like a web application firewall, WAF for short, may make more economic sense, as this will stop any further SQL injection attacks taking place. Giving the organisation time to fix the problem with its website, as this will require additional development time, along with testing and other quality gates required to bring a system into a live production state. This fixing of the problem is the eradication stage, whereas the name implies the threat is removed. In the real world, fixes generally are not as simple as the example above, as the threat normally propagates from one system to another, especially if the security controls to limit lateral movement are weak. This leads to a more complicated process of eradication, trying to fix many problems which might not be impacted by the fix individually, but collectively they might not work as expected when the threat has been eradicated. But if the organisation has bought itself some time by containing the threat, then it can spend time eradicating the threat and the damage it has caused. In a worst case scenario, systems may stop being operational after a threat, and once containment has been done, and if possible eradication, the recovery of the system is the next step. Organisations want to get into a real business as usual state and recover systems quickly as possible. If the damage done was severe, then backups would be used to try to bring systems back up. In today's cloud environments where automation is king, any systems failing can simply be spun up again by running an automation script. Recovery would require disaster recovery teams to get involved to make sure the plan agreed prior, which has been tested on a regular basis, can be put into place. NOC versus SOC. Network operation centres, NOC for short, main focus is to ensure the availability and performance of systems by monitoring the network infrastructure, whilst the security operation centre, SOC for short, has its main focus to protect all systems including applications, infrastructure networks within the organisation. If an organisation gets hit by a denial of service attack, DDoS for short, the NOC will be the first to become aware of this from their monitoring and alerting. The DDoS attack has the potential to affect the performance of the network 
including its overall availability, thereby stopping any legitimate network traffic from, from entering or leaving the organization. The NOC will work with the SOC to ensure the network performance issues from the DDoS attack are managed as an incident through the SOC incident management process. The Security Operations Center provides a central location for an organization to solve a variety of security issues on both an organizational and technical level. It is a central unit within a building or facility that may be supervised by on-site staff. The Security Operations Center is an IT security team used by the IT and security teams to monitor and analyze the organization's security posture and operations. SOCs are centralized units within buildings or facilities that have the ability to monitor employees on and off-site and access information and data from multiple sources. The goal of the SOC team is to identify, analyze and respond to anomalies and potential cybersecurity incidents through a combination of technologies and processes. Employees work closely with the organizing team to ensure that security issues are resolved quickly after they are detected. Risk assessment, coordination and communication are essential to ensure that all support groups have accurate information on the current risk status. Why do you need a security operations center? The need for a security operations center can be based on regulatory requirements. In many instances, an organization may need to satisfy they are capable of protecting their information as required by regulations around card data, PCI DSS for example. Companies that rely on large amounts of highly sensitive data and have sufficient financial resources should consider developing a SOC. Companies can choose whether they want to set up an in-house security operation, operation centre or partner with a managed security service provider that offers SOC services. For small and medium-sized enterprises that lack the resources to develop their own SOC, outsourcing the SOC to a service provider could be the most cost-effective option. How do you implement a security operation centre? The way to implement a security operation centre involves the following steps. Creating a SOC strategy, designing and building a SOC solution, defining SOC processes and training. The SOC strategy is an important part of the overall SOC capabilities where the expectation of the SOC service are determined along with the capabilities and SOC security tooling to be used. The overall strategy of the Security Operations Centre is all about collecting and analysing data to make the entire organisation safer. The strategy will consider the raw data requiring monitoring by the SOC team to ensure it is security relevant, including where the data comes from, is it from an internal or external security monitoring system, for example. When it comes to building the SOC solution, a decision on whether the SOC needs to be managed by the organisation itself or a hybrid SOC is going to be used needs to be made. If it's outsourced, then an initial analysis of the security events is done by a third party before passing them on to the organization. Or if a decision is to go the whole hog and use a managed security service provider who manages the whole of the SOC service, then effective plans and measures will need to be drawn up. The last part of the SOC implementation is defining the processes and the people involved where the incident management, the SOC security teams, the break fix teams and so on are established. The SOC team will also work to define and draft an action plan for the next steps in the security strategy of the Security Operations Centre, such as the introduction of new security measures. In the world of security operations centres, any signs of security incidents are continuously examined for potential security threats using security tools and from further analysis done by SOC analysts. It might be helpful to consider the SOC as an IT department that focuses on security as opposed to network maintenance or other IT tasks. Thanks for viewing this video. Don't forget I have a free guide called How to Get into Cybersecurity for Beginners where I showcase my five must-know tips for anyone considering a career in cybersecurity. The link is in the description below. Till the next time.